it's kind of melodramatic. Uh, I, of course, now it's not lost. I found it, but it's it's hard to find. If you call it the hard to find music of Deems Taylor, and I hope that it in, becomes less hard to find. Um, Kierkegaard said that life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. So here's his obituary. Uh, he died at the age of 80 in 1966. Deems Taylor, music critic and composer who tried his hand at everything from chorales and concertos to musical comedy and movie scores. Now this is a key point. Taylor, the composer, was subsidized by Taylor, the newspaper critic, radio commentator, and author, who forever delighted readers with his breezy, irreverent approach to the art. Uh, the test of music, he once said, is not the mathematics behind it, but how it sounds. And he really believed that, and so as a composer, he was what you might call anti-modernist. But as a critic, he was quite accepting of people like Berg and um, <laughs> Gershwin. Um, <clears throat> so uh, he composed 50 highly popular works, most notably two romantic operas, The King's Henchman and Peter Ibbotson. Uh, we'll hear more about that later. So the this is a... Piece, this is a shot uh, of one of the pieces I found. And, you know, I think uh, it might be good just to get some music in right away. So, George, uh, I'm going to ask you to play the first piece, if you can find the piano. Yeah. George, George, you <laughs> um, the, While he's going there, I'll, I'll say some more here. Uh, <laughs> it does mention musical comedy. That, that was really his very beginning. Uh, he went to NYU and wrote their uh, senior show. And it was very, so good that they asked him to keep writing it. So he wrote four of them. And that was really how he got started. Uh, but George, I'll let you take it over. Well, as you can see, there's two studies in rhythm. And the reason they're called two studies in rhythm is they're in very unusual time signatures. The first one is in 7-8. And uh, this means basically that the music sort of has to divide into groups of 4 and 3 rather than the usual 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3 that we're used to hearing. Um, so that the main motif of the prelude sounds like this. like that, never deviating from that 7-8 rhythm, which is pretty adventurous. It's pretty adventurous at any time, but for 1918, it's very adventurous. And Michael noted when we first recorded this how flowing the melody sounded, in spite of the fact that you would think 7-8 would present a problem in terms of the complexity of the rhythm. Uh, for a moment, I can show you what that same motif would sound like in 4-4, and it almost sounds a little bluesy. popular music of his day, so this music has sort of a flavor of, of blues, a little bit, I think it does. Is that the minor key? It is in a minor key, yes. It's another good point. And it's pretty much minor feeling throughout. That theme recurs three times, so it's a sort of a form that in music we call a rondo. So that you can keep coming back to the initial theme so that there's something to hang on to. And this was all part of his a great obsession with form. He, had, he has amazing uh, uh, formal technique in terms of constructing his music. So here's the prelude, first of two studies in rhythm, seven eight.
you. Thank you. Um, Thank you for bringing it to me. <laughs> the, uh, as I said, in terms of the musical comedy, he, he started at NYU wanting to be an architect, and he came out of NYU wanting to be a composer. And 